Hi, this is David from over at Simply Maya, and today I want to take you through the process of something that's a little different, cloth within Bifrost. Now normally when we talk about Bifrost we're talking about simulating fluids, but it's actually capable of quite a bit more. So I've built this small table here, and now we're going to drape a tablecloth over it. It's not complicated, but it will get you used to the node chains and the workflow of creating cloth within Bifrost. So before we start, it's worth noting that you need Bifrost loaded, so you need to go up to Windows, Settings, Preferences, Plugin Manager, and just make sure Bifrost plugins are actually loaded. I don't believe they are by default on Maya 2022. And the other thing before we start, especially if you're going to use your own scene to try this in, is scale. So by default, Bifrost will see one Maya unit as one meter, even if that unit, logical working units, are set to say one centimeter. So you can either scale your objects down, or I'll show you how to change this in Bifrost itself in a second. I would recommend, though, if you're just experimenting with Bifrost for the first time, just stick to one grid unit being one meter, and you won't have unexpected results. Um, so to start us off, I'm going to just pop open a basic Bifrost graph. So you'll see we're not using any of the traditional fluid containers here. We're just going to pop open a graph, and we're going to create graph. This, by default, is going to give us an input and output node. We're not going to need the input node. We're going to create our own. So I'm just going to remove that for now and swap it with a piece of geometry. So we need some form of geometry to act as a cloth here so we can drape it over our table. So I'm just going to go to poly modeling. I'm going to just select box standard polyplane, and I am going to make that somewhat bigger than the table so we can have a nice draped effect. So something like this. Now with Bifrost, you can, all, of course, come back, change the resolution of this, the size of this. Um, this one will just do for now uh, until we get a basic look at how it drapes. So we've got our collider, which would be our table. So our cloth is going to collide with our table. And we've got our dynamic cloth, which would be this plane. So I'm just going to call this one cloth here in the outliner. And if you don't have your outliner docked, you can find it under Window Outliner. Uh, just helps keep everything neat so when we start dragging things into Bifrost we don't have poly object 26402 somewhere in a node chain that we don't know what it is. So I'm going to drag middle mouse, drag the cloth and the table into Bifrost. There we go, so we've got a table object, we've got a cloth object. We need to turn this one into a collider and this one into a dynamic cloth. So I'm going to hit tab. And if you're familiar with Maya's node editor, you'll know that if you hit tab, you can search for specific things. So the first thing we want to do is make an NPM cloth. So we'll just type make, and there it is, NPM cloth. So the cloth here will be our cloth. So we want to connect the output mesh of the cloth to the input geometry of the NPM cloth. Done. Now we need to make our table a collider. So once again, I'm going to hit a tab and just type collider. There we go and mesh into geometry once again. Now we have a table collider and a cloth dynamic cloth object, but we do need a simulation engine. And for this, we're going to use NPM because uh, we are using NPM cloths. So we want simulate um, uh, NPM. There we go. And that will bring in the simulation node. Uh, a bit like the nucleus node on older Maya dynamics, but you'll see this one has no settings to it. So if we plug in our cloth source into sources and our collider into colliders, nothing too fancy there, you'll notice that I have no way to change the gravity, the scale, or anything else. So we will need a NPM solver uh, settings node. So once again, tab, NPM, uh, solver settings. There it is right at the top. Very handy. And I'm going to plug the output here into the input here. There we go. And this will give me all the settings for this particular solver. So I can change the detail size, which will change the detail in the simulation. Uh, that also has to do with um, the number of subdivisions the thing you're simulating has. So this won't be able to get any more detailed than one square, which is huge squares. So we're not going to get a detailed cloth drapery. I can come in here, change the accuracy, change the gravity. Most of this is pretty self-explanatory. If you've ever done any di uh, Maya dynamics, there's also a setting in here for simulation scale that pertaining to one meter. So you can play around with that if you want. Like I said, 
If you're just experimenting and you're new to Bifrost, I'd keep it as just one grid unit being one meter. Uh, and that's really all we need for a cloth simulation within Bifrost. So people tend to get a little overwhelmed with Bifrost because it has a lot of inputs and outputs to plug in, especially if you're new to Maya, but it's a really quite simple, quite elegant system. So we need an output here. So I'm going to take this cloth mesh and plug it into this output. And that will start a Bifrost simulation. Now, it's worth noting that this is very, very simple. But if it wasn't, we wouldn't want to be plugging all these things in and out while we were live. Otherwise, we'd be you know, running out of mem memory. Our CPU would be screaming at us and everything would take ages. So if you hit control period, that will pause a Bifrost simulation. So generally speaking, when I'm connecting things up, especially if I'm collecting a very large output up um, or a very high resolution input that Biplus has to simulate, I don't want it recalculating the simulation every time I plug one thing into another. So control period will just pause. So I'm going to control period again to unpause. I am going to rewind our simulation here. Um, and you should see a Biprost cloth is created. Okay, in this instance, it's not, and this seems to be a bit of a bug with Bifrost version I'm using. If you pause the simulation and then you rewind, this happens to you. So I, I was pretty sure it was going to happen. I wanted to leave it in the video just in case it happens to you. I'm going to uncollect it, connect the output here, and I'm just going to replug it back in, and that should make everything work hunky-dory. If I go and hide my original cloth now, control H to just hide, you'll see that this Bifrost cloth mesh has been created. So yeah, there are still a few bugbears within Bifrost. It's Maya after all. There are always still a few bugbears. But if you pause your simulation, uh, rewind, and you find that that little error message pops up for you, just reconnect the output cloth. And I'm going to simulate this, and you'll see a very, very fast, very high resolution simulation. But Technically, that's all you need. That's how you go from uh, nothing in Bifrost to cloth in Bifrost with a collider and with a cloth node solver, solver settings node, and finally a cloth mesh output. Now, a couple of things to take into account. I am once again going to control. I'm going to rewind first this time. I'm going to control period and pause this. I'm going to bring our original cloth back, so Shift H to bring that back, and I'm going to just smooth this geometry so we can get a bit more of a high resolution solution. So just spacebar for the hotbox and get down a mesh smooth, and let's really make the CPU cry a bit, uh, maybe even a little bit more than that. Although two divisions on such a simple thing like this would work fine. Okay, I am good, and I can rehide this. I don't need it anymore. Control H, and if I re go to start my Bifrost simulation uh, after I unpause it, of course, control period, there we go, and I'm going to restart the sim, and you should see the Bifrost has done the thing again. Excellent Bifrost, simply excellent. So again, we're going to fix that by just unplugging and replugging. Hopefully, a service pack will sort that out. I'm sure it will. It didn't used to happen. Uh, so there we go. And you'll see now we've got our output cloth from Bifrost hanging above our table. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and simulate this. I'll pause for this. This is not too um, uh, massive a simulation, but it'll take a good minute, I would think. Okay, so that took about a minute, minute and a half to simulate out. It's a still a fairly low resolution object, but we got a quite a nice drapery and hopefully this gives you some inspiration of how to start using Bifrost graphs and NPM cloths to simulate out all sorts of things from curtains to tablecloths to, you know, drapery, as I mentioned before. Now, there's one other thing that I want to cover quickly in here because it's something that comes up a lot. And it's the fact that this is indeed a simulation. This is not standard Maya geometry. It's part of a Bifrost graph. 
So a problem you might uh, run into is if you simulate out some curtains and stuff for a interior scene, you're going to have to re-simulate that every time you want to render the scene, and that's probably not what you want. So I'm guessing for the vast majority of work, you'll just want the final output, the last frame of the simulation. You won't want all of the simulation data. So you want to be able to do something like uh, throw some cushions on the floor and then just take the output from that sim rather than the animation of it. So there is a fairly simple way to do this in Maya. I'm going to go up to Window and Node Editor and that should bring up my uh, Bifrost Graph. If it doesn't, you can just click the Bifrost Graph here and hit Graph and there you go, that will be up. Uh, if you're not seeing the outputs, it's this button here if you're not used to the Node Editor. And you can see here that this is my Bryfrost graph. So what I'll need is a piece of geometry. So I'm just going to get a poly modeling and use a box standard polyplane because this is indeed a polyplane. And that will have popped in to my outliner. So there is the polyplane shape. Okay, so I'm going to need to take this and connect it to that, but I need a node in between. So I'm going to go to uh, BIF and I'm going to look for Bifrost material to Maya. Uh, Bifrost geometry to Maya geometry. So I'm going to take the cloth mesh, which is the Bifrost geometry, and plug it into this node here. I'm going to take the output from this node here, Maya mesh zero, and I'm going to plug it into the polyplane here. Uh, actually, that's the polyplane transform node. I'll need its shape node. So you'll see the polyplane here has got a shape connected to it. We don't need this. We're just going to delete it. And we're going to take, once again, the Maya mesh zero, and we're going to plug it in to the in mesh here. Okay, if I look here now, you'll see that that polygon plane is a perfect representation of our table. If I then delete the history from the polygon plane, delete by type history, I can now delete the Bifrost graph and everything else. So I'm just going to delete the Bifrost graph, delete the original cloth, and I've got a table with a tablecloth, and it's all my geometry, it's box standard, texture it, take it to said brush. Do whatever you want with it. So I really hope that's given you some inspiration to start using um, Bifrost for things other than fluids. And if you've never used Bifrost before uh, and you're new to Maya, this is a way to get used to a dynamic node-based uh, workflow. So I will have this video on my site, simplymaya.com. I'll probably also put it on YouTube. So hi, YouTube, if you're watching this, uh, go over and check out Simply Maya. We've got a lot of ad-free uh, free content there as well as paid-for stuff, which helps us out immensely. So thank you for watching. Hope to see you again.